Hi everyone, it's Monday the 25th of April and it's bang on 8.30 in the evening. Right, in this video I'm going to be showing you a bunch of items um, that I picked up recently, most of which came from a local car boot sale. I've actually been to three over the last couple of weekends. Um, the exception is a few of the model railway items I will be showing you. Um, yeah, and I will talk a bit more about the model railway in a separate video because I have got some plans for that and I am going to be working on it this year. So, let's uh, get right into it, shall we? So, here we go. A lot of it is just die-cast models. Um, yeah, there seems to be die-cast galore at my local car boot at the minute, and they're being sold relatively cheap. Um, in fact, I can't believe how cheap a lot of it is being sold for, to be honest. It's really good, decent prices. Um, I go to Alsham. Um, in fact, now I've got my own transport, I could go to Hoverton as well. I hadn't thought of that one. I might do that uh, next time I've got a bit of money. Anyway, yeah, Alsham is called The Late One. They have got a Facebook page. Um, they call it that because they actually start for buyers at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, and sellers can arrive from 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and sometimes on a really good, nice day, that whole field that it's on is just full. To the point where the um, chap that runs it has to start turning sellers away. Because obviously you can only get so many on the site. <clears throat> anyway, I do like going to that one. But uh, I do have restrictions now. If I go on my moped, that is, which I did for two of the three car boots, because... Mum didn't want to go. Well, she didn't want to go for the Bank Holiday Monday one, which I don't blame her. <coughs> Excuse me. Because when I went there, it wasn't even half full, that field. Which actually surprised me for a nice Bank Holiday Monday. I'm guessing people just had other plans. Um, and Saturday, just gone, she had other plans anyway. So I just decided to go on my own. Right. So we'll look at the die cast last, I think, and we'll just look at all the other odds and sods that I've got here. So I did buy a few tools, um, some of which are not here. I did just buy some pliers and things I left over at Mum's intentionally because um, I've been having a bit of a sort out in my stepdad's workshop and noticed that we seem to be short on pliers over there. So I found some half decent pliers at the car boot for like 50p, so just bought those and left those over there. Um, and speaking of 50p, there is one torch that I bought that isn't here. It's only a little one about yay tall, rubberized, three LED torch. That was 50p and works. And this was 50p with a brand new battery in it. <laughs> so if anything, it's worth 50p just for the... Um, battery it's one of them six volt batteries lantern batteries see that I use for my road lamps and whatnot um, so yeah that was a bargain itself there seems to be a, quite a few stalls at the minute where they've literally just got boxes of assorted junk if you like and they're selling it for like 20 pence an item or 50 pence an item that's where I got that torch from these I have got another little screwdriver like that somewhere. Not like a little scriber thing there. Um, and there's a few more. It was in a plastic tub thing, which was also 50p. From the same store I got the uh, flashlight there from. I kept a few and I gave a few to my stepdad because I thought they'd be handy for his model railway, you know. Just a stirring stick maybe for some paint or whatever. Or for small screws. And also from the same stall. Um, I've got just a random box of fuses. I think that's a fuse. But yeah, I've got a random box of fuses. Some rather large cartridge fuses in there. And I think there's a torch bulb in there as well. Yeah, there is a torch bulb. And I'm plugged up fuses. I actually did see a question 
the other day as to why in the UK we call them plug tops, not plugs. I have absolutely no idea, it's just what we call them, so you often hear them, the fuses called the plug top fuse. There's glass fuses and all sorts in there. And just because I find that I do need them every once in a while, I've got this little tin here which is 50p as well. Um, oh no, there's another few items I got. It's just a couple of glass jars about that tall by about that wide. It's not like jam jar size. Now just full of some random nice and shiny bolts and nuts and I thought as myself and my stepdad are restoring various things at the minute they would come in useful. So I bought those and left those over at Mum's. <coughs> you know because he, her um, stepdad's just got a load of uh, Lister engines that he wants to restore. In fact he bought a Lister Junior, two Lister D's I believe they are. He already had one Lister D that he bought when they were living down the road from here, um, from me. Here, um, <clears throat> so he's now got three listed these, I believe that's what they are, and a water pump. Um, but the listed junior, the two listed D's and the water pump cost him a total of 300 quid, which um, was a damn good price for that lot. So, uh, you might see some video footage of some listers running. Right, anyway, moving on. I've got another pair of these, in fact a set of wire strippers I've got has also got the uh, crimping feature on them but I don't like using it on them, it just doesn't feel like I like using a pair of these. I don't think these have been used that much because that's still quite stiff, in fact I might spray it with a bit of oil or something on there, see if I can loosen it up a bit, I'll just do that. Um, but yeah my other ones I've got which I adore using which are actually a bit thicker and a bit heavier. The crimping bit has got a bit of a twist in it. Um, I think these were something like 50p as well, something ridiculous. So I thought I'd have a spare pair kicking about. And, just to help when I'm doing electrical work in the home and whatnot, I've got this little um, tester thing. It shows me the polarity. It will work with DC and AC. And from it'll work from 4 volts all the way up to 500 volts. But the reason I got it, and I see a lot of electricians using these on YouTube, probably not something as tacky and cheap as this one, but you know, you know, they'd use something like a fluke. But they'll use this to go between the live and neutral on a connection on a particular cable just to confirm that cable is dead, because obviously if nothing lights up on that. What you're working on is dead you can confirm it's dead so that's why i bought that for a quid and i've already tested it on um a few batteries so i know it works on dc at least but uh, to be honest it's in very good condition for a quid so can't see what brand it is but it's probably just a silly cheap brand anyway uh <clears throat> colored light bulbs i bought as well but you can't guess what they cost. <laughs> Did you guess 50p? Then you're absolutely correct. I've got a couple of vintage Philips ones here. 25 watt. Got a nice red one. What I do you like about these vintage bulbs? I do like the brass coloured caps. And speaking of, a friend of mine, he needed to change the bulb in his bedroom. But uh, he's not used to the British, you know, bog standard um, pendant light fittings that use BC like that. He assumed that he's, he'd um, come here from Portugal that it would be just a screw-in bulb like most other countries are, not in England. <laughs> um, so that was something he learned the other day. There's the yellow one I got in its sleeve as well. Uh, and I got one of these Osram sort of soft glow type bulbs because I do like the shape of these. I've got like three or four of these in my little bulb, well I say little bulb collection, it takes up like four boxes. <laughs> and this one is a Criselco bulb. I don't think I've ever heard of those, I think it's the first time I'd heard of that. But uh, given what my memory is like, I could be totally wrong. And lastly, for the car boot odds and sods, I bought four of these. Wilex. MCBs. Um, reason being, 
the fuse box I put in my stepdad's workshop is a Wilex one. So if we needed to upgrade or perhaps replace a brake or whatever in the future. I've got some spares. Um, <clears throat> so I've just got them for the main sort of circuits you would come across, which is just your B6s, your 6 amps, your B16s, which are your 16 amps for your radials. Just for a shed, that's pretty much all you need for a workshop. So yeah, I just thought I'd grab these just so I've got a handful of spares. I'm just wondering what the heck that is on this one. It didn't look the same. I could have got like a couple of more B16s. I think he had four in total. These were only like a couple of quid. But uh, I thought two of each was enough. Right. So that is pretty much that. Let's do the model railway stuff next, I think. Before we get into the die cast. Because I can show you the um, 176 scale cars and then that will bring us into the die cast. Actually, in fact, before we do that, new project. Um, I might just have to move the camera, actually, because I don't think I'm going to get it in. And by new project, I actually mean a new bicycle project. I picked this up today. It's um, a Peugeot road bike frame. 15 quid. Reasonable condition. So, I'm going to build it up and hopefully use it. Um, you're probably thinking why when I've got a rally in the shed. Well, I'm going to sell the rally for stars because the frame is actually bigger than this one. That one is a smaller frame, which means I'll be able to sit on it a bit more comfortably. And I might convert it to a flat bar or I might just go all out racing bars on it. I haven't decided yet. But that won't be for a few months because I've got to get all the parts together because I literally have none for a road bike unless I decided to um, take the rally apart. Still is a bit stiff but it could be from lack of use or it could be that the cone is a wee bit too tight. In fact it could have been because I just loosened it with my hand. So it could be that this bit is all a bit, it needs to be loosened just a wee bit more. But I will do that because no doubt I'll take it apart and re-grease those bearings and hope to God they're not loose because I hate those. Apparently they're better, uh, more reliable when they're loose but they're a bigger pain in your ass to put in. So yeah, that'll be a future bike project. I thought it'd be something different as I've already done a mountain bike. Right. Do it all over my hands now. So, um, about three weeks ago, myself and my stepdad went to a railway exhibition, model railway exhibition. Um, in fact, there was two that day, but we only remembered that when we were already heading to the first one, and I couldn't remember where the second one was. And I think we both spent enough money at this one anyway, so from the same vendor. I got these, and I've got a very nice Class 55 Deltic in full running order. Um, so I've got a smaller signal box. My stepdad gave me one, but it's quite a large one. It would be more for like a, a larger shuffle yard sort of thing, whereas I don't have that on mine, so I just thought that one would be a bit more suitable. But I'm going to redo that chimney pot because it's really bothering me. <laughs> I'm going to size of it. <clears throat> What I might do is actually take that off and just see if I can roll it a bit tighter. So it's a bit more realistic, like on the um, shops here. What we got? We've got um, Harris Fruit and Veg and Robertson's Rare Books. He had another one similar to this, you know, the same sort of design, shape. Different shops though, but it wasn't finished. I had no interior or anything on it. So I just thought, you know what, I'll, just, I'll stick with this one for now. <clears throat> I can't remember what I paid for those either. Um, other than that, a lot of the buildings this chap had were all low profile ones, you know, where he, it was basically just the front, so the rest would sit up against a flat wall. I don't have that on my layout, so it wasn't very useful to me. And there's the uh, 55 Deltic. And the chap actually had. Um, I'll have to see if I can replace a buffer there. I've just realised. Oh yeah, I can replace it, it's come off. That one's chipped. What I will do is bend that one. 
might have actually got chipped while I dropped it like when I got back to mum's. <coughs> I'm such a clumsy ass. Yeah, it's in pretty damn good. I paid 20 something quid for this. I think it was just over 20 quid. And he had like a little test track set up so he could demonstrate it running. And my stepdad bought a, um, a Mark II 125 HST from him. Uh, for 20 quid um, and it was working as well one of the problems with it was it was missing um, the coupling hooks just like this one is <laughs> but while he was there he also bought a decoder for DCC because that's what my stepdad likes to use he's a big DCC fan I like using my uh, DC setup I am tempted to go DCC one day. But I'm just happy, you know, that I've got a layout that I can run trains around, so. Um, I do want to add some more detail to it. But yeah, so his 125 has now got um, a decoder fitted, and I think at least one of the lights are actually directional. And these were actually bought brand new from a local. Well, there was a local uh, model railway shop there, Great Eastern Models, I think they're called. And I got these from them. There's no particular reason for the police car apart from I just like emergency vehicles, so I bought it. <laughs> it's not really going to fit in with anything on my layer, but you will see. I could have demonstrated that better if I actually got my box of 176 scale vehicles. That I've got quite a mix. There's no fixed time period it's just all over the place but uh, I have always said I didn't want it to be set in a specific time period I wanted it to be like um, what do you call it I suppose set in modern times but uh, ah, preserve railway that's what I was going for and the reason I want to go for that is so I could just have pretty much whatever I wanted on the layout. <laughs> you know, I could have classic car days with all these classic cars I'm putting out here, apart from the modern police car down the bottom here. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I might get the zoom around, I'll zoom in for you. There we go. You can see I've got quite an array of vehicles out there. One of them you can't see. It's too dark. Yeah, we've got the uh, Mark 1 Golf, a little uh, Moggy 1000 um, convertible, it's not a split screen though. Modern Vauxhall Corsa patrol car, the Bedford Ambulance. Allegro. These all came from the car boot, by the way. All these in the boxes. Um, a Hummer Super Snipe. And I'm not sure what this one is, because I've never looked. Oh. A London Ambulance. That's all it says. London Ambulance. It does. Okay. I think, look at it though, it's a comma. We've got, we've got modern transit Royal Mail van, and we have got this one, which uh, is a, a car I've never even heard of. Looks nice, though. It is a black Wyvern F something or other. I can't really quite read it. Well, I do like that one. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't like it, so... <laughs> right, we're getting there, slowly. I got this one because I liked it as well. Ford Sierra, wouldn't mind getting a few more from the 80s period. Little Mark 1 Ford Fiesta. The chap I got these from at the car period, he had hundreds of these. That one's um, an Austin Cambridge. And another... 
J L. Yeah, J one. Bedford J one. I'm showing you the back, not the front, because I'm an idiot. There we go. And a nice navy blue, but I'm not sure what the um, ambulance service is on that one. So that is it for the railway stuff. I've been wanting a bunch of vehicles for a while. These weren't cheap. Not at uh, 50 quid for the whole lot. Yeah, ouch. But that was still cheap. But then if I, then, uh, if I bought them in the store brand new. <clears throat> I'm blaming my stepdad for that one. Because <laughs> this was the Saturday that uh, me and my mum were running a stall there and he and my sister decided to uh, just pop up and have a look. And uh, he walked off to have a look while our sister sat with us for a little bit. And came back with a bag full of these from the guard's stall. So I was like, I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> I came back with all of these. If he's there next time, then I might actually um, see what else he's got. I might be interested in a few more. Right. Let's see if I can get this video to be 30 minutes, shall we? So, got this Britons for a couple of quid. Britons um, Dyna Pack Roller. A bit play worn, but I don't care about play worn. And again, for a couple of quid, Britain's Baylor, New Holland Baylor. Or is it? A 376. Now I just need the uh, little square bales to go in it. <laughs> but yeah, I thought, you know, for two quid, a little implement for my Britain's tractors that I've got. Which I want to expand on that collection. Okie dokie. And these three red cars here, again, were all two quid from the, all from the same stall. I've got a little Ferrari here, which is a Barago, this one. I do like Barago models. Ferrari Testarossa, I think that says under that, yeah. It's one of those fonts and whatnot that you have to get in. Do you ask the right light to be able to see it? A price sticker or something, I just realised. Well, the remnants of one on there anyway, there we go few little dings in the paintwork there, but other than that, it's in pretty good condition. But, uh, I'm usually not one for sports cars, or supercars, or whatever you want to call those. Um, but I do like Ferraris. Now, I didn't know, until I bought these, that Majorette did such a scale. I always thought Majorette did the dinky ones. Yeah, these are all Majorettes. So we've got this Porsche, Ferrari rather, I'm looking at the wrong one, aren't I? 365 GTP, GTB, sorry, slash 4 Daytona. I do believe, I'm getting the nail under there, yep. Hood opens. I don't know why they've made big orange headlights, but I suppose that was done on the cheap. This one's the Porsche, and you know, I've actually got it written on the side. Um, it looked like, oh, it doesn't know, it's lost both mirrors, never mind. It's only mirrors. Porsche 944 Turbo. Does the hood open on this one? I think it does, but it doesn't want to. Or am I doing it the wrong way? No, it definitely opens, somehow. Is it going to let us have a look? That is very stiff, but I did get it to pop open. I didn't know if that was going to be a, you know, a forward opening one or the normal opening. It's not a badly detailed engine in there, though. And for the grand sum of 50p, yes, 50p, I've got a limo. It's probably the closest I'm ever going to come to a limo. I got that from somewhere else though. And these ones were from Saturday just gone, that one's from last weekend. Also from Saturday just gone, from the same seller I got the three 
red models from, the two Ferraris and Porsche. Got these beauties, look at this. Pontiac GTO convertible. Really do like this one. Love the red ring on the tyres, I love the white interior and that shade of blue. And a lovely chrome trim. I bet this would have looked a lovely car in real life. Looking in there, it looks like it's got a manual gear shifter in it. Or, I wouldn't have mind something like this in real life. Good old Lincoln Continental. These were two quid each, by the way. And we've got a... keep forgetting what this one is. I can't remember what this one is. Let me see if I sit it on my hand and not drop it. I'm going to see it better. Cadillac DeVille, that's it. I just lost a mirror in this one. I knocked a mirror off the other day. And a convertible Camaro as well. He had a few models this size, but these were literally the only four that I really like. So that's that. And we've got a Corgi BMW here. Which I think I'm going to give a fresh coat of paint to and make it look nice because I do like this one. What was it? 325i. My dad had one of these many years ago. I can't remember if his was the um, two-door version or the four-door. I can't remember. Next time I see him, and if I remember, I'll have to ask. Next one. It's a British gas transit van from Corgi. That was a couple of quid as well. I can't remember what the BMW was. Something like 50p or something ridiculous. Um, but to be even more ridiculous, I found these two trucks. I've got this one. She's got a door missing on the trailer, but it's in very good condition otherwise. And this one for 20 pence each. Um, there's an old chap selling these, um, <laughs> and when I asked the price, he was he um, actually then uh, said to me, "Can you tell I don't want to take them home?" He was literally pricing it to sell. <laughs> this is one of my favourites. Little Siku uh, Pizza Taxi. I nearly said Pizza Taxi for some reason. I'm going to keep that one in its pack, which is something I rarely do. I've got that from a chap I actually know who lives around the corner from me. And I've bought a few, well, i say a few, a lot of stuff from over lockdown as he's listed it up on Marketplace. Got this as well. This is a nice majorette. Very rare to find with canopy and generator in tow. Actually, that could even be a compressor. <clears throat> I have got another one of these in orange, but it's very well play-worn, and obviously the canopy and everything is all missing. And I couldn't resist another one of these in the box to go up on my shelf. <clears throat> I just like the box art for this era of Matchbox. It's the only reason I've collected them in the box when I see them. Same with the Skybusters, the um, SV22 Tornado. If I can get it in the right light so you can see it. Box is a bit beaten, but I'll hang that one up. <clears throat> now this one, I'll have to let you into a little secret because I'm guaranteed someone's going to notice it. I have resealed it. Because it was sealed when I bought this from the seller. But once I'd got it home, this has actually come off perfectly. So I was actually able to line it back up and just glue it back to the backing card. Which, to be honest, unless I told you, I really don't think anyone would notice it. I was just looking for any like glue residue, but I can't see any. <laughs> I think I've done a very good job of that. But um, I just thought something like this would be so rare to find still sealed in a pack that it was worth resealing. 
and it would make it easier and a lot nicer to display it as well because I can display it like that on the shelves in the bedroom because all I do is just stick a little pin in the shelf and then hang this from the pin <clears throat> now the last thing is this big old case so let me just have a quick swap around Now, not everything in this case I actually got the car boot, but I did buy the case and 48 cars that were in it for quite a large sum, as in 50 quid for the lot. Some people on some of the diecast groups think I paid a little bit more than what it was actually worth, but a lot of people said if you're happy, then you know what it's worth doesn't matter. But there is still some in here that did come with the case, so I'm just going to show you those, um, those didn't, this did, in fact it's one of the several reasons I bought it, because I've got several of these little um, rescue snowplow trucks in various whoops, colours and liveries and whatnot, none of them, apart from this one, has the canopy, <laughs> all of mine have I'm missing my canopy. I've got red, I've got white, I've got another one of these. I might even have one of these in my scrap box as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've got a little Kellogg's lorry. And I will say that pretty much all of the vehicles that did come with this were either mint or very near mint. So I've got a Kellogg's truck here. We have got this Mercedes one here, which is a container truck. Um, a little bit of damage to the sticker for Mayflower. That just sits on this. There's a couple of pegs on there that line up with holes on the box. The only thing I don't like about that is you, if you make the mistake of going to grab the box when you take it out of here, you sort of leave everything else behind. Um, this NASA truck came with it. It's missing the um, rocket, but let's see if I can find one for it. That is not it for the top section. A very nice one of these, so when I can find my other one, it may end up in the box for the car boot. <laughs> so that is it for the top row. Everything else I've actually um, put in myself because I was having a bit of a sort around when I bought this home. <clears throat> okay, so we'll take these top trays out. Quite a few of them in here actually came with the case. So we have got a nice mint one of these in yellow and brown. Well, there's a couple of tiny little dings in the cab, paintwork, and that's it. To be honest, this likes to crack because it goes brittle. So we have got Model T, I think it is, if I remember rightly. Model A Ford van, Pepsi Cola. The other one is Champion Spark Plugs. I know Matchbox back in the day did several of these with various promotional stickers on the side. And they are actually in mint condition. We've then got this, which again is one that's in complete mint condition with canopy. <laughs> Very nice um, truck, I don't know, what is it? Aspen Ski Holidays. And the next one beside it is this one, which I've got another one of. I think my one's missing the spare tyre off the back. I think I might have one in my scrap pile as well, where the plastic framework here is all broken. But again, looking at it, I can see that there's not a mark on that one, so that one is mint as well. And we've also got this, not quite mint, it's um, got a few dings, especially where my thumb is this side on this um, rear fender. But it is a nice little truck. It's probably actually one of the worst ones in here condition wise to be honest. 
Um, I've got a couple of little dupes here. I've got this one, which has got the golden eagle on the front. Which, from what I can see, is another... No, it's a near mint, because it's got one tiny little mark right on the edge there. And that is it. So I, I am conf confident in calling that a near mint. And then we've got this little one, which has got Laredo, or Laredo, on the hood, which is mint. Never seen that one. <clears throat> so there's actually several reasons I, after a bit of haggling, I did decide to pay the 50 quid for it. One, because there is several models in here that I'd never seen before. Two, there were several models in this case that I didn't have. And three, most of them were in damn good, well, if all of them were in damn good condition. You know, mint or near mint. I've got the same lorry, or brand of lorry, as the um, Kellogg's one. This one's just got the Hertz van and truck rental. I've just got a few little dings around the cab. Um, here's one that I picked up at, a car, at the car boot separately. Just because I had that on it. It's missing one of the spills, but it's got one there. <clears throat> um, then three gas tankers. Which are all, from what I can see. This one, the shell one, is a near mint, but I've never seen one with a grey tanker. I believe all the other ones I've got have clear windows, not the amber windows, and chrome tank. So, I don't know if this one's a rarer variation. It's got a few dings around the top of the cab there. <clears throat> and then we've got two Amoco ones. Now, one with a black tank and one with the chrome tank. Which are minters. Now, I think I have gotten... Well, I know I've got another Amoco one, but I think it's the one with the black tank. So I'll have to dig that out and perhaps put that in the um, car boot pile. And we've got this um, Volvo truck with the uh, lion cage on it. Got a few dings around the front there. And then we've... <laughs> I'm going to glue this one on because that is really ticking me off and I keep falling off. Um, like this. Yeah, tape residue around this. Gold Fresh. I don't know if that's a supermarket I'm not familiar with. I don't um, recall that name. Oh, it's on another Volvo truck. And we've got another Volvo truck here. Which is the Fruit and Veg Co. And that one. I would actually call mint condition to be honest. I was just looking around it. But yeah, I just can't see a mark on that one. Right, we're nearly there. I think most of the ones that are in here actually uh, were in this case originally. Now that one as well. It's the second one I've got and I'm going to keep both. This one is pretty close to mint. It's near mint. <clears throat> and so is my other one if I remember correctly. I'm going to have to dig it up. But I had these, one of these when I was a kid. Absolutely loved it. And I've got a mint one of these. I've got a, few, um, a different variation of this, which isn't in as good a condition as this one. And we have got... It's always on these people. It's always the cab lights that seem to get the paint dinged on them. It's the same on this one. But all the chrome plastic and everything is in superb condition. Nom, nom, nom. I don't know, I'm just being random now. <laughs> right. One more, and then we are done. And that's another one of these cement mixers. In very good condition as well. The problem is with these, um, you'll find even on the convoy style ones, you know, like my um, Midnight Express convoy we've got here. 
several things can actually happen to these. You can get the headlights snap off, the bumpers can snap, and the ends can snap on the exhausts. I swear I can hear some loud sort of party music or something. So, one of the reasons I've taken to keeping a lot of my die cast, or at least the, the ones that are in great condition to mint condition, in these cases, <clears throat> because it keeps them safe, it stops them getting knocked about, I can keep them nice and flat like this, keeps the dust off of them, and I just find it's easier to store them, so I am going to be looking for some more of these cases. I mean, I don't think I did too badly for 50 quid, to be honest. You know, I know a lot of the cars in there would have sold for th three to five quid a piece on eBay. And then you've got, I don't know, got the cases taped up there, so I'd say the case is worth at least a tenner itself. I don't think I was far off the mark, to be honest. That plastic cover's got a bit funky there, but really I only wanted the case for um, storage anyway. I think this is now my third one, and I've got um, another four of these trays separate as well full of them. One day I'll have to get them all out and uh, show you the lot that I've got in the cases at least. So that is actually it for the video. A little bit over half an hour. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoyed having a look at all the uh, the junk and not so much junk that I bought. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so yeah thanks a lot for watching. My voice is going I'm not sure I'll be able to do the next video. <laughs> um, yeah, I will uh, talk to you in the next video. Bye!